Welcome to Watch Me Code. In this episode, I'll show you how to install the standalone version of the Jasmine JavaScript testing framework. Now, I'm using a Mac in this case, but the steps and process for installing and using this are the same on a PC or on Linux. All you really need is a web browser and a text editor. Everything that you're going to need to use is built into the JavaScript and the HTML that we'll be using. So let's get started. Head over to pivotal.github.com slash jasmine. This is where Pivotal Labs has all of the information that you'll need to get started and to use the Jasmine framework. In the download section on this page, go ahead and click on standalone, and you'll see a list of various files that you can download. Now there's a problem in the latest 110.zip where a few of the files that we're going to need are missing. So go ahead and grab the 110rc1 zip file. Once that's finished downloading, you can unzip that and you'll see a few folders, including this Jasmine standalone 110. We're going to work directly inside of this folder for now. To get started, open up this specrunner.html inside of a browser. And you'll see that we already have a few tests that are passing. Jasmine has provided a few example tests for us. As you can see, those tests are passing inside of the specrunner.html. This represents pretty much everything that you need to do in order to get Jasmine up and running in the standalone version. All you need to do is modify the specrunner.html to work with any additional libraries that you want to include and any, any spec files that you want to run whenever you refresh this page. So let's take a look at the folder structure and the, the tests that were included with the Jasmine standalone download. So within this folder structure, you'll see several things. This lib folder contains the actual Jasmine runtime, including the Jasmine HTML and the Jasmine test runner JavaScript files. There's also the MIT license, which you might want to pay attention to if you ever decide to redistribute this. And of course, a favorite icon. The spec folder is where all of the specs that you're going to write will live. Notice that there's also this spec helper file inside of this folder. This file is used to create helper functions, additional matchers, and other things that you need to do that are generalized to your test suite and not specific to an individual test. It allows us to create functionality that can be reused across tests in a common location. Of course, there's a spec runner HTML file, which we've already looked at in our browser. And then there's the source directory. Now the examples that have been included in here are a player and a song. These are basically uh, simple little examples of an mp3 player and a song to be played in the mp3 player. Of course, there's no actual mp3 files and there's really no UI for these objects to work with, but it kind of gets the point across of being able to have a JavaScript object and being able to run tests against it. Let's go into the example files that we have here. To do this, I'm going to open up TextMate. and then open this project folder. Now that I have TextMate open, I can go into the spec folder and open up the player spec file. There's a few very simple pieces to writing a Jasmine spec. The first thing that you need is a describe block. The describe block is used to literally describe what you're going to be testing. In this case, we're going to be describing the player. Within the describe block, we provide the context for our tests. In this case, there are a few variables being set up, the player and the song, and then a before each callback is set up. This before each callback is executed before every one of these it callbacks is executed. For example, there's an it function right here, 
And before this it function is executed, this before each block is executed. Additionally, you'll see that there is a nested context with this describe block right here. Now this before each block is going to run once before this describe block. The before each inside of this nested describe block is then going to run before each of the it blocks inside of the nested describe. So let's take a look at this test a little bit closer and see what it's really doing. We can see inside of our before each block that we're instantiating a new player and a new song. Next, we have an it block. This it block describes something that the objects we're dealing with should do. In this case, we are going to expect that the player is currently playing the song that we specified. We're also looking at a custom Jasmine Matcher that is expecting the song to be playing. But let's start by looking at this expect statement up here. The expect method is how we tell Jasmine what we are actually testing. It takes one parameter, which is an object that we are going to set an expectation against, and it provides access to a number of methods called Jasmine Matchers. These matchers allow us to specify data and information that we expect to find on the object that we passed into the expect method. In this case, we are expecting the player object to have a currently playing song attribute, and that currently playing song attribute is expected to be equal to the song variable that we've already provided. So we have our player object being instantiated here, as well as our song object being instantiated here. Then we have a call to the player.play, and we're telling the player to play the specific song. The player is then going to set itself up to be playing that song, and it's going to set the currently playing song to the song that we've passed in. This toEqual method is going to say, look at the value that we've passed in here and check to make sure that it's equal to the value that we passed in here. If it is the same, then the test passes. If it's not the same, however, for example, if we put in an invalid value, when we run this, the test will fail. Before we go on, I'm going to go ahead and put this back to song. Make sure that this test still passes, and it does. Now let's look at the custom Jasmine matcher that's been provided. Rather than saying expect player.currently playing song, we can shorten the syntax and add a little bit of a DSL to our tests while also providing some better functionality with better error messages. So now we can say expect our player to be playing a specific song. So let's take a look at this to be playing matcher, which exists inside of the spechelper.js. Now inside of this spechelper.js, we have another before each block. This block is actually called before any tests are ever run. It doesn't exist inside of a described block. That means it's been scoped globally and it will always run before any other tests are run. Within this before each, we're calling this dot add matchers. The add matchers method allows us to add our own custom matchers to the Jasmine expectations. So here we have to be playing specified. And back in our spec, we have to be playing called. We're passing in song as what we expect to be playing. And our helper has defined to be playing as a function that receives an expected song. Within this function, there are a couple of key pieces. We have the player being set to this.actual. This dot actual is what we specified inside of our expect block. Now, typically speaking, in the, in the simple 
Jasmine matches that are included, such as this expect to equal, the this dot actual represents the value that we actually received inside of this expect block. So we can say expect this dot actual to equal whatever we expected to be passed in here. In the case of the custom matcher being set up, this dot actual doesn't really represent the actual value passed into here. Rather, this dot actual represents the player object that we passed in, and the value that we actually expect is going to be an attribute from that player. So by assigning this dot actual to a meaningful variable name, the rest of the example matcher will make a little bit more sense. Once we have that player retrieved, we can verify that the currently playing song on the player is the expected song. We can also verify that the player actually is playing. Now the return statement returns a true or false value. And anytime a true value is returned, the matcher will be considered to be passed. Anytime a false value is returned, the matcher will be considered to be failed. And we will see the nice big error message on our screen. Now let's take a quick look at writing our own spec for the first time. It's good to keep your specs organized, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a new file to my spec folder so that we can keep things separated. I'm gonna call this example.spec.js. Now the naming convention really doesn't matter in this case, but I like to name my files .spec.js so that I can have a very clear representation of this being a spec file, a specification file, instead of a helper file or another file that my tests happen to be using. Within this file, I'm gonna add my describe call. I'm gonna tell it that we're describing an example specification, and I'm gonna provide a callback function. This callback function is what actually gets executed by the test runner. Within this callback function, I'm gonna provide an it call, and I'm gonna specify a very simple expectation of it should be able to add one plus one. The it method also takes a callback function. And within that it block, we set up our expectations. I'm going to expect that one plus one equals two. Now having written this file and having saved it, it's not yet going to run inside of our specification suite. In order to make that happen, we need to open the spec runner HTML file and examine the contents in here. There's not a lot of code inside of here, but it's all very important and it's very well organized. If we look down at the first couple of script blocks, these are the script files that provide the actual Jasmine runtime for us. This first file provides the functionality of executing all of our specifications, and the second file provides all of the functionality for updating the HTML based on those results. The next block here is actually incorrect. This comment should really be sitting down here, and this comment should really be sitting up here. We're including our spec helper and our spec files before we're including our source files for the actual application. Now we haven't added an additional source file, but we have added a new spec file, this example.spec.js. So here in the section for spec files, I'm going to add a reference to our example spec, save this, 
And when we go back to our browser and refresh this page, we should see the number of specs increment to six. And we do. We've now successfully added our own specification to this test suite. Now, if we do happen to have a new source file, let's call it example.js. And let's add a function in here called add. Which will simply add two numbers together and return them. Now we do need to add a new file to our source here. Example.js and then our example spec.js we can call our add function and then modify our expectation to expect the sum to equal two. Now when we go back to our browser and refresh, everything still passes. But instead of having the functionality hard-coded directly into our test, we've included it inside of an external JavaScript file. I hope that this quick look at the standalone version of the Jasmine testing framework for JavaScript has been helpful. For more information on Jasmine, be sure to visit the Jasmine website at pivotal.github.com slash jasmine, and also check out my additional screencasts at watchmecode.net.